السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته To carry on with the development of the heart and the cardiovascular system I'm gonna discuss in this presentation the fetal circulation and the postnatal changes that occur at birth I'm Dr. Dalia Saleh, professor and the head of anatomy department at Mansoura University, Egypt In order to understand very well the youtube placental circulation and the fetal circulation first you need to know a little bit about the development of the fetal vessels i'm going to focus on the development of the veins um, the embryo has the following veins the vitelline veins they develop around the wall of the yolk sac and the gut tube and they drain both the umbilical veins, they develop inside the umbilical cord and they communicate with the placenta and bring oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. And another system of veins, they are called the cardinal veins. They drain the body wall, the head and neck. I'm going to focus now on the development of the line and the umbilical veins. If we look at this uh, section uh, in the embryonic disc, you can see the neural tube here, the cut edge of the amnion, the wall of the yolk sac, the connecting stalk. In the wall of the yolk sac, you can see uh, newly blood vessels are formed, and you can see a cranial to the neural tube, the cardiogenic area, and the area where the heart will be formed. In this section, you can see the heart, the arterial arches, and the dorsal aorta. What concerns us here the presence of the umbilical arteries in the vitelline arteries. Also, you can see the vitelline veins that develop uh, in the wall of the yolk sac, the umbilical veins that develop in the umbilical cord, and at the body wall of the embryo here lies the cardinal veins. In this picture, you can see the heart, the sinus venosus that empties into the heart, and the sinus venosus receives both right and left cardinal veins, umbilical veins, and vitelline veins. This is the duodenum, and the liver develops at this region. When the liver grows, its cells penetrate the vitelline veins and break them down and form the hepatic sinusoids. The hepatic sinusoids empty into the sinus venosus. With further development, the umbilical veins lose contact with the sinus venosus, and with further development, the right umbilical vein starts to degenerate as well. And the only one that persists will be the left umbilical vein. In the same time, a communication develops between the left umbilical vein and the future uh, inferior vena cava. This is called ductus venosus. Remember that it is a duct that communicates two veins together. That's why it's called ductus venosus. With further development, the right umbilical vein degenerates. The left umbilical vein persists. The vitelline veins below the level of the liver will form the portal vein, the splenic vein, and the superior mesenteric vein. Inside the liver, they form the hepatic sinusoids that terminate into uh, the hepatic veins, which empty into the inferior vena cava. Here, you can uh, still see the ductus venosus communicating the left umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. Regarding the fetal circulation, in this animation you can see how the blood flows. So, venous blood will return from the body through both the superior and the inferior vena cava to the right atrium and from there it will pass to the right uh, ventricle through the tricuspid valve and then pushed through uh, the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary arteries 
to both lungs to be oxygenated, then returns back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, to the left ventricle through the mitral valve, and then outside the heart through the aorta to the rest of the body. The fetal circulation is a little bit different from that of the adult circulation. First, the placenta is the source of the oxygenated blood to the fetus. It delivers the oxygenated blood through the umbilical vein to the liver and from the liver it empties into the inferior vena cava to the right atrium, to the right ventricle, some pass to the lungs through the pulmonary artery, back to the left atrium, to the left ventricle and then to the body through the aort. But what happens is that in order to deliver uh, the oxygenated blood rapidly to the fetus, we need to bypass the liver. And also, because the lungs are not functioning, we need to bypass the lungs. So there are three shunts or shortcuts that bypass these uh, structures. The umbilical vein will communicate with the inferior vena cava directly through the ductus venosus in order uh, to deliver the oxygenated blood rapidly to the heart and also the right atrium is in communication with the left atrium through a foramen called the foramen ovale to bypass the non-functioning lungs also the pulmonary artery communicates with the aorta through a small duct called ductus arteriosus So if you look at this animation, remember that the oxygenated blood is in red, the non-oxygenated blood is in blue, and the mixed blood is purple. So oxygenated blood uh, comes from the placenta uh, to the fetus through the umbilical vein. Inside the liver, most of the oxygenated blood passes directly to the inferior vena cava through ductus venosus. However, small amount of blood will circulate inside the liver sinusoids. The ductus venosus is guarded by a sphincter to control the amount of blood returning to the heart of the fetus, not to overload it and cause its failure. The blood then passes from the inferior vena cava to the right atrium. The inferior vena cava is guarded by a valve which directs the blood towards the foramen ovale, so the blood now passes from the right atrium directly to the left atrium. However, a small amount of blood is mixed with the blood that returns from the upper half of the body through the superior vena cava. This blood will go down into the right ventricle. Since the lungs are not functioning and the alveoli are filled with fluid, thus the right ventricle faces a high resistance to push the blood inside the pulmonary trunk. Most of the blood inside the pulmonary trunk will escape through ductus arteriosus into the aorta. However, small amount of blood will pass to the lung for its nutrition. This blood will return back through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium and from it to the left ventricle and then it will be pushed uh, to the aorta. There are five sites where oxygenated blood will mix with the non-oxygenated blood inside the fetal circulation. First, inside the liver sinusoids, where oxygenated blood that comes from the umbilical vein will be mixed with the non-oxygenated blood from the portal circulation. Second, inside the inferior vena cava, where blood is mixed with the non-oxygenated blood that comes from the lower half of the body. Third site, inside the right atrium, where oxygenated blood will be mixed with the non-oxygenated blood that comes from the upper half of the body through the superior vena cava. Fourth site is at the left atrium, where oxygenated blood will be mixed with the non-oxygenated blood that returns from the lungs through the pulmonary veins. And the fifth site would be the aorta, distant to the opening of the ductus 
arteriosis because oxygenated blood will be mixed with the non-oxygenated blood that escapes from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk to the ductus arteriosus. Thus, the concentration of oxygen will decrease gradually till less oxygenated blood leaves uh, the fetus through the two umbilical arteries back to the placenta. What are the postnatal changes that occur to the fetal circulation? At birth, the baby takes his first breath. So, lungs begin to function and its blood vessels open up and the pressure inside them decreases. So, the resistance uh, faced by the right ventricle is no longer exists and the pressure inside the right side of the heart will decrease in the same time when blood returns back from the lung to the left side of the heart uh, the pressure inside it will increase this will lead to closure of the ductus arteriosus and later on it will transform into a ligament called ligamentum arteriosum also the septum premium and the secundum of the uh, interatrial septum will oppose and the foramen ovale will transform into what is called fossa ovales. This is the right side of the interatrial septum. You can see a fossa here, it's called the fossa ovalis. And around it, there is a border, we call it limbus of fossa ovales. The second thing that happens at birth is cutting or clamping of the umbilical cord. The umbilical arteries are no more needed. Their distal part will obliterate and transform into a ligament. We call it the medial umbilical ligament. While their proximal part will persist because they communicate with the internal iliac artery. And they will give rise to the superior vesical artery that supplies the urinary bladder. Also, the umbilical vein is no longer needed. It will become fibrosed and transform into a ligament called the ligamentum teres. And the ductus venosus will close up and transform into a ligament. We call it ligamentum venosum. Uh, this is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. And if you like it, do not forget to subscribe, like, and share.